In this video, I act as observer and ballast for Matt during his Kit Fox LAA check flight. My name is Tim Palmer. I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. I had said to Matt that I'd uh, like to fly the check flight with him in the kit fox now he's finished the permit on it. Do you know it should be flashing red? It is. Okay, that's it then. And this is just, I'll move out the way. So I set up one camera temporarily on a uh, suction mount behind and held one in my hand. I'll move, move my pad out of the way. Yep. What I'll do is I'll go to I'll go to a thousand feet. Yep. Then we'll do the thousand to two thousand climb. Yep. And then we'll do the stall up at two thousand and then the bulk landing yep. um, up from two thousand after the stalls yep. and then have a play around and then yeah, that's I think fine. that's pretty much it from yeah. what I remember. Well as I say I can go through Oh I've got the foot the, the um dive to up there but yeah. So what have you got in the way of flaps? None. Or you haven't? No. So your stall is stall clean? Yes. And there's nothing. It's yeah. just a mush. Yeah, okay. There's nothing there. Okay. It doesn't, doesn't drop a wing or anything. All right. Just literally just... Yeah, it's like, a you'll see about 800 feet down probably. Yeah. But it will just, just bump like that and it will just parachute down. All it right. It doesn't drop a wing. Excellent. I, I mean, I'll pull it. I won't do anything where it'll pull up and, and, yeah. and uh, drop a wing deliberately or anything. But when you'll see... I can pull right back and it won't drop a wing. It's yeah. very, very stable. Good. I'm afraid that camera is just roughly positioned, but you can move it when you're editing, so you, know, you get a bit of a chance. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll just run it through without the ignition on. Yep. Clear prop! Just to get the oil around the engine and make sure that we've got some. Mm -hmm. This was the first flight after an oil change, so Matt knew that it would be a little bit of time before the oil was pumped into the spin-off filter. The trouble is with this, I haven't got a um, audio recording. This time not because I forgot to press the recorder or, or anything else, but I actually didn't have the right settings. Um, normally I have got an adapter which works off a twin plug, but uh, Matt uses a a, a single socket. Now I know that some people use a microphone which they put into the um, earpiece of their headset. Now unfortunately I do have one but the jack plug for that is not the right size to put into the audio recorder so I was rather stuck on that. The cockpit's a little bit cosy and just had to make sure I was out of the way for this bit. I was explaining to Matt and showing the camera that I had made my own test card up which I used for my own check flight. It was a nuisance that I couldn't capture audio but Matt here was showing me how the electric trim works. Not being used to the Rotax engine Matt was talking about the water cool temperature, the oil temperature and how it was important to just wait for these to come up. On takeoff, the acceleration was very, very quick. I had noticed that uh, people like Trent Palmer pushed very, very far forward on the stick 
to bring the tail up in their videos but I was also aware of the fact that uh, Matt had to do that on this one but actually once into the air we climbed up like a homesick angel to be honest I hadn't flown in a true high wing for some time, so the view down was pretty impressive. Many of you know that I used to fly the Nord for a good many years and had over 900 hours, but I didn't really count that as high wing, because actually it was a shoulder wing. It doesn't matter how experienced you are as a pilot or however many times you do it, it's always nice to show off your house from above. And Matt was pointing out exactly where he lived. As far as the time climb from 1,000 to 2,000 feet is concerned, we always start from below the 1,000 foot mark to make sure that we're established with the proper settings before we uh, hit that 1,000 and I got the stopwatch ready in order to do that for Matt. Bearing in mind we are very close to all up weight, it did actually climb extremely well. It's a matter of recording RPM and airspeed in the climb, which is what I was doing here. Matt gave me a chance then to fly the Kip Fox for myself. Uh, I needed to look down and make sure that my feet were on the pedals because positions are slightly different. And then it was a matter of getting the right sort of attitude. Interestingly, I'm very, very light. Very light on the controls, you'll see that I didn't move the controls very much in order to get a, a yaw or a pitch and, and a roll. Very, very responsive, but actually quite difficult to keep properly in balance. It was a late evening flight and time was pressing on so I gave controls back to Matt so that we could finish the test program. Next on the clipboard was the stalls. I was uh, looking forward to finding out exactly how it performed based on what Matt was saying before we took off saying that it didn't really stall as such, but it just sort of mushed. We climbed a little bit higher and Matt did his hazel checks and I was trying to sort out which was the best position to put that other camera. One last check on the instruments.
like my Jodel, the stall warner goes off very very loud and, and fairly early but you'll notice that as we get closer there was a pronounced buffet there we go we've got a lot of buffet I'm not aware of a break at all but as Matt said look at that descend rate then doing my observer duties it was a matter of recording all of the speeds setting up for Bork landing Matt brought the power back changed the trim and you will notice that when it comes to actually applying power there's quite a push needed in order to keep the nose down and rather interestingly enough then there's the other hand on the top to change the trim and then it was straight into the max speed dive nothing particularly unusual fairly steep but difficult to catch in the camera returning to Nayland Matt was just checking the effectiveness of the controls and I was actually looking around and thinking just how comfortable it was the seats were hard but they were they were very comfortable I'm, I'm saying here that the four point harness is actually holding me really really tight in, in place I feel very very secure not a lot of room admittedly but very very secure um, and, and very comfortable he also wanted to show me that in a very steep turn the visibility through the top panel was very good unfortunately I didn't seem to catch that very well with the camera but you will see that it was a very steep turn and the view was very good as we approached the overhead I was telling Matt that I don't very often get the opportunity to film Nayland, certainly not from a high wing um, and once he saw what I was doing he put a left turn in a little bit in order to position me right over the top of the airfield while he did a pretty steep 360 degree turn Having flown right handed so I could film the airfield, Matt then wanted to lose height so turning left handed he flew an equally steep but this time slipping turn in order to lose the height. You'll see the second of the two lakes now as we turn face. Interesting to see the way that Matt has set up for the approach. Very similar to what I do in the Jodel. Reasonably high. very high as we come over the river but as I've said before not that unusual 
as it's very similar to the approach that I fly in the Jodel. On landing and taxiing in, I have to say the one thing I was aware of was the fact that I was I seemed to be sitting fairly close to the ground. I know that it's a relatively small machine and it does sit at quite a steep angle, but yeah, it did seem quite quite low to the ground. I also had the conversation with Matt about whether or not he'd ever flown with the doors open, and it was quite interesting what he came up with because he was saying that he had done it once at two and a half thousand feet he did manage to open the door but as he pointed out he was slightly worried because he'd forgotten that he'd had to reach out a long way in order to pull it back in yeah because jerry used to fly with the doors off and lean out and take photographs oh do you but he could not paint an upstairs window of his house. Oh, really? Because of the, the ladder. Do you know, I do find that myself, is that if you've got a reference yeah. to the ground, yeah. um, it is, um, it's more scary. Thank you for that. No, That's thank very helpful. You. Thank you for somebody that. Somebody else to fly with for a change, which is quite nice, and somebody else to take the, take the readings. I yeah. can do the flight, enjoy the flying then, rather than <laughs> them to scribble and... Yeah, it means you can take your mind off it, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. And you've got a chance to fly something a little bit different. Very, I mean, very different. It's it keeps you on your toes. Well, that's I, if that if that's your assessment, I'm pleased because when I feel like I get rusty, <laughs> if the plane is always making sure that I'm no, no, you've on your, you've, you've definitely got to be on your ball on the yeah.